we will discuss how to lower cholesterol, especially when it remains elevated after weight loss or a healthy diet. Normally, we need cholesterol for many processes. Almost all our cells contain cholesterol as a structural component of the membrane. However, when cholesterol levels are constantly elevated, it builds up in the blood vessels, forms plaques on your arteries and leads to atherosclerosis. This restricts blood flow and eventually causes serious complications such as heart attacks, strokes or chronic kidney disease. Cholesterol buildup occurs gradually over many years, typically requiring around 15 years to cause serious health problems. However, in many cases, genetics and lifestyle factors can speed up or slow down this process. The number one cause of high cholesterol is considered to be a diet high in saturated fats, such as those found in red meat, dairy products, fried foods, and trans fats, which are found in baked goods. Palm oil, coconut oil, and egg yolks also raise cholesterol levels. The second most important risk factor is a lack of physical exercise. A sedentary lifestyle is a significant risk factor for high cholesterol. Cholesterol levels also increase with age as metabolism naturally slows down. Women after menopause are particularly at increased risk as estrogen has a protective effect against high cholesterol. Sometimes even people with a healthy diet and normal weight still have elevated cholesterol levels. In these cases, Genetics plays an important role. Another key factor is physical activity. It plays an important role in the formation of both bay and good cholesterol. The third important cause is hypothyroidism, where reduced thyroid function slows down metabolism and causes cholesterol levels to increase. Some medications such as beta blockers, diuretics and steroids can elevate cholesterol as a side effect. Chronic diseases also raise cholesterol levels. For example, insulin and resistance and diabetes can increase the liver's production of cholesterol, especially in cases of uncontrolled diabetes. Kidney diseases can also cause the body to become less efficient at filtering fats from the blood, leading to higher cholesterol levels, particularly triglycerides. Liver disease increases cholesterol levels because it struggles to remove cholesterol from the blood. Also, people after gallbladder removal tend to have high cholesterol because fat digestion happens improperly and cholesterol absorption in the blood can be increased. In normal cases, total cholesterol should be less than 200 mg per deciliter. This gives us a general picture of cholesterol levels. From 200 to 240 is considered borderline high and it still requires medical attention. If it is more than 240, it is classified as high and is associated with a higher risk for heart disease and stroke. Low-density lipoproteins are a form of cholesterol called bad cholesterol, and they should be less than 100 mg per deciliter for an optimal level. If low-density lipoproteins are elevated, it is usually because of an unhealthy diet high in saturated and trans fats. Another form of cholesterol is good cholesterol called high-density lipoproteins, its optimal level should be higher than 60 mg per deciliter. This good cholesterol helps remove cholesterol from the bloodstream and transports it to the liver for excretion, so it has a protective function. When there is a low level of good cholesterol, it is often due to smoking, lack of physical activity or genetics. Triglycerides are a type of fat, but not cholesterol. Triglycerides are correlated with bad cholesterol when elevated and increase the risk of chronic diseases. High triglycerides are usually caused by high carbohydrate intake, obesity and poorly controlled diabetes. The number one recommendation for a person with high cholesterol is to increase physical activity. Aim for at least one hour of moderate intensity aerobic exercise per day. This can include brisk walking, jogging, dancing, swimming or cycling. It can reduce bad cholesterol by around 10% and increase good cholesterol by around 5% while also significantly decreasing triglyceride levels. The second important solution is to eat more soluble fiber, especially oats, beans, lentils, flax seeds and apples. Ideally 5 to 10 grams of soluble fiber daily is recommended. Soluble fiber binds to cholesterol removing it from the digestive system and preventing absorption. 
the best source is still oats. For example, one cup of cooked oats contains 2 grams of soluble fiber, while one medium apple contains 1 gram and one medium banana contains 0.6 grams. Intake a plant-based diet or increase plant sterols. If consuming margarine, try to find fortified margarines with sterols and stanols. Naturally, nuts, seeds and legumes can significantly reduce cholesterol by around 10% if taken regularly with approximately 2 grams per day. Plant sterols block the absorption of cholesterol in the intestines. From seeds, almonds, pistachio sunflower seeds and sesame seeds contain sterols, but obtaining an important amount naturally is difficult. Another tip is to replace saturated fats, like butter and full-fat dairy, with unsaturated fats, such as olive oil, avocado and fatty fish. Replacing saturated fats with unsaturated fats can lower bad cholesterol by 5-10%. to 10%. Reduce carbohydrates, sugars and processed foods like white bread, pastries and sugary drinks as they increase triglycerides and decrease good cholesterol levels. Weight loss is crucial. When you lose 10% of your body weight, your bad cholesterol decreases by around 10%, sometimes more. In total, lifestyle changes can often reduce cholesterol by 20 to 30%, depending on individual factors. If, despite lifestyle changes, bad cholesterol remains above 100 to 130 milligrams per deciliter, then medications are recommended. Statins are the most commonly used medications to lower cholesterol, such as acetylcholestatin and simvastatin. Statins should be taken consistently, usually once a day and often at night, as cholesterol production in the liver is highest during sleep. While taking statins, liver enzymes should be monitored. Additionally, they carry the risk of muscle pain, which should also be monitored. Statins block an enzyme that is important for cholesterol production in the liver. Statins reduce cholesterol levels by around 20 to 50 percent. If statins are ineffective or side effects occur, there are other medications such as etimib, which blocks cholesterol absorption and can lower cholesterol by around 15 percent. Additionally, PC9 inhibitors are injectable drugs that significantly lower cholesterol, especially used in people with familial hypercholesterolemia.